Today on Contractor Cast, we're going to be talking about Nearby Now and how to set it up as an admin or as a service tech. Stay tuned. All right, so today we're talking about Nearby Now and basically how to go about setting it all up. Especially if you are an admin, you're going to be responsible for getting everybody else onto the application and using it. So we're going to go over the main things that an admin needs to know. And then we're going to talk about it from the service technician standpoint, how to download the app, how to set up their account, how to log in and do check-ins and ask for reviews from customers. So there are definitely a lot of different things that you can go in here and do as an admin, but we're going to focus on the main three things that an admin needs in order to get things kicked off for their team. So in order for admins to get started, we've got three things that they mainly need to be focused on. First will be creating team members. The second will be doing check-ins in-house as well as asking for reviews. And the third will be looking at the reporting. Let's jump right in. So the first thing we all need to do is go to admin.nearbynow.co. And when you get there, you're going to log in with your email address and your password. So once you sign in, you'll be presented with your primary dashboard or where you get the, the most overview of what's going on, on on the account. This will show you your check-ins, the number of photos you've posted so far, the number of, the number of cities you've done check-ins in, and the number of reviews you've requested. This is also where you can generate all kinds of reporting on this particular uh, screen, but we're going to jump back to that here shortly. The first thing that, that a admin needs to be able to do is set up their team. And on the left-hand side here, you've got a menu. Um, and on there, you should see team. So as you can see, I've got multiple team members already here. But again, this is our account that already exists. Somebody who is setting this up for the very first time will probably only see themselves. So since this will be empty, the first thing you'll need to do is in the upper right-hand corner here is select invite users. And these will be uh, the email address of your service technicians. So whoever's going to be out in the field uh, doing check-ins and, and requesting reviews from customers, you would need to put their emails here. And as the example shows, they can there can be multiple emails in here at one time. They just need to be separated by a comma. It can be a company email address. It can be a personal email address. This email address will only be used to log, for the technician to log into the system. So it's not something that a that a customer will receive. So I'm going to put in here just my Gmail account for test purposes and click send invite. Now this is going to send an invitation to the technician that they will then need to respond to and go through the steps of setting up their account once they open their message. And so as you can see here, once you send out that request, the team member you sent the request to will show up as unknown. And in order for them to have their name here, like all the rest of our team members that show up with their names here, the technician on their end, again, will have to answer the email, open the email rather that they received, uh, go in and create the account, which just basically asks for their name, email, and a password. And then this will then update with the name that the technician put in. This is also where you can go in and make someone who is a team member uh, maybe they're maybe they're going to be an in-office person doing administrative things. You can also make them an admin if need be, or remove admin status if that's the case. But that's step number one for setting up your team. The next thing on the list is doing a in-office check-in and review request. In order to do, to do that, admin will have to go into the menu on the left-hand side again and click on review request. And this will initiate a check-in as well as a review request, as you see here. So again, we're going to select the team member since I've already set myself up as a team member. Um, we're going to put in a, a customer's name. You're going to put in their physical street address. And this again is what will geocode the check-in on the website. So all of this information right here is what gets populated on your actual website. We are in the Raleigh area, so I'm just going to stick with Raleigh, North Carolina, 27603. 
And here's where you can re send the review request. And you can either send it via email or send it out via text message. So for this particular example, I'm just going to use the email to send a review request to the customer. And in this case, I'm just, again, putting my Gmail account as an example. I can also go in here and add an image. If we just installed a new AC unit on this job, I could take a picture of that unit and attach it to this uh, check-in. And that will then also put the image on the website. This is gonna be the check-in that shows up on your website. And this is where we wanna, again, be mindful of what we're, what we're putting in here and basically put in a description of what the customer called in about, as well as a description of what the technician did to resolve that issue. So for instance, in this particular example, if the customer called in and said that their AC was blowing warm air and the technician, in this case, did a So again, in this case, the example here is the, the issue was AC was blowing warm air and the technician performed an AC tune-up and replaced the air filter. So here we're using a couple different keywords. AC tune-up could be a keyword if you're doing, you know, if you're wanting to do tune-ups, um, you know, you, you're, you're replacing the filters, etc. But we don't want a keyword stuff here and we don't always want to put the exact same information on, on every single check-in. So a good rule of thumb, again, is just, again, putting in the, the description of what the customer called in about and a quick description of what the technician did on that particular job to resolve the issue. Once that's completed, we're going to hit check in request review. That action has now done two things. It has posted the information to the website, the check in, and it has also sent out a review request to the customer. And here's what the customer is going to receive as their review request from this technician. As you remember, I put in the customer's name as John Smith, I chose myself as a technician, and here's a link to the survey that a customer could fill out and leave a review request. If a customer signed into Google or their Facebook account, this could have very well just directed them to their Google My Business page to leave a review or directly to their Facebook page to leave a review. But in this particular case, I was not signed into that account and therefore um, I just get the standard email from nearby now that invites me to leave a review. So the last thing on our list is going over reporting. So as an admin, as I mentioned before, when you go to the main part of your dashboard, you can go in here, uh, again, just go to reports on the left-hand side and scroll down and you'll see multiple reports that you can run, but we're really just going to focus on this check-ins list report. This is the primary report that most clients use to get an overview of you know, what their technicians are doing out in the field. Are they requesting reviews? Are they sending, are they doing check-ins, et cetera? And you'll see here that uh, this was a check-in that I just performed and you can sort this by date. So you can go back and look at previous information, uh, but I'm looking at the most recent 30 days. You'll see here that technician Wayne S performed a check-in and was near this particular address. Again, AC was blowing warm air, performed AC an AC tune-up and replaced the filter. And this right here just means that uh, this yes, no off to the right hand side underneath the review request column means that yes, the review was sent, but no customer John Smith has not yet filled out that review request and left a review. So that just kind of gives us as an admin, gives you an indication, you know, are our customers filling out the review requests and you can then nudge them here on the right hand side, even further over um, to resend the review request if in a day or two that customer still hasn't filled out that review request. One thing to keep in mind as a as an admin here is that if these customers are signed into Google and they got routed to their Google account or their Facebook account to leave a review, then this will continue to show this way because unfortunately nearby now can't track if someone you know, went into their Google account and left their review instead of going into nearby now. So those were the three main topics that we wanted to cover for admins today. Again, setting up your team members, doing in-house check-ins and reviews, and looking at the reporting. Now let's take a look at what it takes for service technicians to get set up in Nearby Now as well. And on the service technicians list, there's also three main things that we're gonna focus on today. That's downloading the app, setting up their account, and doing check-ins and reviews. Let's jump in. So as a technician, the first thing you need to do is go to your email and look for the email from your admin inviting you to the Nearby Now system. Once you have that, open it up, 
and click the link to set up your account. Here's where you're going to type in your name and your password. And now your account has been created. The next step will be to go to your mobile device and download the Nearby Now application. I'm going to be on an iPhone, so I'm going to show you from that standpoint, but it works very similar on, a, on an Android phone. Go into the App Store, do a search for Nearby Now. Once you have that, go ahead and download the app. Once the application has been downloaded, open it up and you'll be presented with a login screen where you will put in your email address and the password that you created when you were setting up your account. So when you first sign in, you'll be on the check-in tab and at the top, you'll see an area where you can write that check-in and, and describe what you're working on. And below that, you'll see a map that should indicate where you are servicing that job. In the check-in area, again, you're gonna type in a description that tells what the customer's issue was when they called in, as well as the action you performed to resolve the issue. One of the things that you can do here is also add an image or a video of the completed job. Once you've typed in your check-in, off to the right-hand side, you'll see a little teardrop marker icon, and that'll allow you to submit the check-in. Then on the next page, you'll be presented with the option to send a survey. And this is where if you were in front of the customer, you would ask if they would be inclined to leave you a review. And if so, then you would click on send survey and then you'll be presented with the option to send that review request via email or SMS. We recommend sending the review via SMS because sending it via SMS makes it less likely that it will just get lost in a customer's email inbox. So if you choose SMS, you'll be presented with another field here to type in the customer's name and their phone number. And that's it. The customer has now received that review request via text or if you had typed in their email address, received it via email. And that's how you would use Nearby Now as a service technician. So those are the main areas for setting up Nearby Now as an admin, as well as a service technician. If you and your team need help with some of these things on your end, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We'll be glad to take a look and see if we can help you out. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.